Hey guys, Kyle here, and today I will be covering something that I think has been much requested, but I keep forgetting to bring it up or uh, do it myself until recently where I actually did need it. And that is, as the title suggests, array filtering or dynamic array indexing using data storage. Okay, so this is a common problem for people. Let's say they have like a large array with a bunch of stuff on it. And for some reason, they want to get a specific element in that array, maybe at position X. You can't do that. You can't do data get storage test array at X. That doesn't work. And you can't put a score inside here. You have to put a number, 0, 1. So if I do 0, you can see I have something here. And we'll go over all of the data you see shortly. But you can see I have stuff on an array. And doing that is pretty nice for custom crafters or whatever. Like there's there's reasons that you would want to be able to grab a specific item in the array. But doing that is not necessarily that easy. Uh, one of the common places where this is used is in the player database, which lets you associate MBT data with each player, uh, which is pretty cool. But it needs to use this kind of array filtering. So let's take a look at the demo. So in the demo, I have two different ways of filtering. So we have a filter test by tag, which you can see I give it an input score of one and it gives me two outputs, one and one B. Input score of two, I get two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six. And this is based on an array that I have here that I built, let me zoom in, which has just the first element has a one, the second element has a two, the third element has a three. Obviously, I'm using one indexing. You could change this logic to zero or whatever, because but I kind of like having zero as uh, its own thing. But anyways, the numbering doesn't matter. The point is that it's able to find the specific value you're referring to. Uh, I guess if I was being technical, zero should be the first one, but I just made one the first one. Okay, who cares? Anyways, uh, so how does it accomplish this? It accomplishes this quite simply, but also complex uh like it's it's easy to once you have the code it's easy but without the code you're like how would i do this this is very complicated so basically what you do is you want to have bit patterns as you might see here so the goal is to take the input number x okay break it down into its binary makeup which would be like 0011B. Okay, so let's break it into its binary components. And then on each of those binary digits, you can perform some operations to your array to filter it. So you're basically using some array filtering techniques to figure out which one it specifically is based on this bit pattern here, which yes, that will mean that your data storage file will get larger, but your code will be significantly faster than if you tried to do something like cycle the array to the element, if there is a lot of elements, if there's only like 10 elements, who cares? Or six elements, who cares? But let's say you have 100,000 elements or 1,000 elements even. That's pretty significant. So the first step, if we're, I'm going to go through the actually remove because it's easier to understand. Uh, so the first step is to convert your number to binary. So this is a deck to bin function and I only made it work for up to three bits because that's the example, but you can just extend this pattern. So literally just copy these three lines of code, hit enter, change this to three, and you just repeat. Uh, it's a recursive uh, math operation. Uh, but essentially this just breaks down the input score into the binary pattern. So in this case, you can see on my sidebar, I put in in of six. So the bit is one, one, zero. Okay, so this breaks you down into your binary. So now you need to basically filter based on that binary. So what we do is we make a copy of the array. Okay, so we make a copy. And then if the zeroth bit is a zero, then remove anything in the array where the zeroth bit is a one. So this is where the filtering takes place. We're basically doing the opposite. So if my number was uh, has a pattern of one, one, zero, okay, then anything that has a pattern where the zeroth bit here, the zero here is a one, so they have x, x, one, these numbers need to be removed because they can't be my number because my number doesn't have a one there. So you're basically just filtering for each bit. And as you filter, there will be less and less elements uh, as they don't match your number. So first we're going to remove anything where the uh, bit zero value is a one, uh, which would technically make it an odd number because six is an even number. So we're gonna remove all the odd numbers for our array. Okay, uh, now if it was one, then we need to remove the false. So you need each option. And this is why we use binary. Uh, decomposition as opposed to every single number. So if you 
just wanted to go by number, uh, you would have to have won't, uh, basically a lot of combinations. With binary, you need two combinations per bit. If you had uh, ternary or whatever, three, where a bit could be zero, one, or two, you would need to have basically six commands per digit. Or I think so. You would need to have a command if it was matched zero, one, or two. You would need three per. So you're kind of like trying to find a good trade-off, and we just go with binary because it's the simplest to understand. Uh, but it might not be the best trade-off. I don't know. It's something you can try and experiment with. So anyways, so then if the bit one is zero, then delete anything where bit one is true. And if the bit one is true, then delete anything where bit one is false. So you just go through this logic. And if you wanted this to work with more bits or more elements, then you just need to copy these two commands and change the bits number to uh, three in both of these locations and four and five and six. Okay, so after you delete everything, you'll be left with only one thing left on the array or multiple things are left on the array which is the thing that matches. So if I go scoreboard players set in test to one, so this is kind of showing you an edge case specifically, uh, you see that I added an element here where the bit pattern is true, false, false, and it's the bit pattern is one. And here the bit pattern is one. They have the same bit pattern. So what happens when I filter it is what you might expect. Uh, so let's do filter by remove. Uh, we have two things on my array. So it's possible to have matches if you set up your data storage where you have multiple things that match the same result. It's uh, It can happen. It just has to do with your convention when you input the values. And obviously, if you're building an array like this, you would want some kind of auto generator to generate it for you to make sure you don't make any mistakes. So that's kind of how you do the filtering using the remove. But there is a more efficient way to do this because when you do remove, you're basically having to reshape the size of the array each time you remove stuff from it. So you're kind of cutting things out of the middle and shifting things together, pushing things together. And that can be a little bit inefficient or it could be. I don't know exactly how their source code works, but if that is how it works, it would be inefficient. So then we come to the matches system. So I would recommend using this system, the remove system, if you have a situation where you're looking for multiple things. Uh, for example, uh, let's say that you have like a list of things inside the list. So you have, uh, you want this first one to trip for this bit pattern, but you also want it to trip for another bit pattern. I recommend using the remove method because the matches will give you some weird behavior. But the matches is pretty nice if you just have one bit pattern per element of the array that you're filtering. And essentially what it does is you go to every element in the array, and this time you don't have to make a copy, so it's more efficient. You don't have to make a copy. You just have to go to every element in the array and set their matches flag to one. So you're assuming ahead of time that you have matched everything, okay? Then you kind of filter by setting it to false. So if the bit zero is zero, then go to anything where the bit zero is true and set their matches to false. So instead of removing it, you're basically just turning the flag to false. And you do that for all of these. And then to obtain your results, it will be anything in the array where the flag is still equal to true. So that allows you to kind of do everything in place, which is more efficient. And it has the exact same behavior. You can just run the demo command. And again, if you want to expand uh, this, you just copy these two lines and change the bit. Now kind of some discussion on uh, what this uh, could be useful for because of possibilities for changes or whatnot uh, changing you definitely want to change it so that this bit stuff is inside a sub uh, sub element so that it's a little bit more organized uh, and anytime you make these arrays I would suggest make having it automatically figure out what the bit pattern is supposed to be uh, there's a lot of things you can do with this, but basically you have dynamic array indexing by using this filtering method. And you can set up your filtering method once and never have to touch it again, as long as you support enough bits to support enough elements that you have. You might have seen me use something similar in this bit filtering method before with uh, damage matching. So I hit something and figure out what thing I hit or something hits me, figure out what thing that I hit. Uh, I did something similar. And just like in that case, I'm going to recommend that obviously the perfect case would be to use as many bits as an integer can fill, but I recommend using as many bits as you need because your data is going to get really large if you use 32 bits per number. So in my case of my uh, item database version two, let me enable it. I use, um, I use a total of 12 bits because I only want to support up to uh, 4096. So you can see that in this method, uh, oops, 
Okay, so I, I fixed everything. Uh, so I have this system where I can add custom items with MBT, and I have this system where I can add custom tags, and the custom tags have bit patterns as well. So these bit patterns are being automatically generated, so when I throw something in here, it'll automatically know the bit pattern uh, of whatever thing I threw into it. And since it's automatically generated, I can use recipes like this, and this is kind of where I use the filtering. So I have a recipe where it takes... Uh, item tag one and item tag two. Okay, so uh, this item relies on item tag two, so I can use it like this and still get the answer. Okay, but I can also use polished andesite in its place, which is pretty nice. But I can't use two polished andesites because polished andesite is not an item tag two. So item tag one, item tag two, uh, it'd be easier to show if I uh, had the UI working for the other thing, but it also works with this. That's just a test case. Uh, but as you can see, it works with item tags. And uh, this is just a place where it can be useful. Anyways, guys, if you thought that was useful, let me know. Leave a like. Let me know what you want to see next. I'm kind of dry on ideas at the moment. That's why my videos have been way more infrequent because I'm busy with doing other stuff in real life. And then when I want to work on something, it's usually something like this item database, which takes a lot of time and energy, but does not produce things that are very easy to share with you because it's very complicated. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.